Good Tuesday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown, well, almost downtown Memphis, Tennessee, actually from House Onyx tonight here in the friendly confines into portions of Memphis and looking again at some pretty quiet conditions for right now, but whether or not it stays that way into the course of the next couple of days, well, that's going to be, again, the possibility of some more interesting weather heading our direction. We don't have much of anything going on, again, for immediately, but as we go into the next about 24 to 36 hours, that's where we're going to begin to see the possibility of some little bit weirder weather out there. And please keep in mind that, again, we're looking at things to be changing into the next day or so. Again, winter weather forecasting, if you've never tried it before, is one of the most finicky, frustrating things you could possibly do. No, that is not anything in the way of an excuse. It's just saying that the way it is. If you've never done it before, and one of my senior projects at University of Kansas was doing that type of thing, so it was a challenge. It always is a challenge because there's so many different things in the atmosphere that could happen. That being said, as of right now, we've got, again, the possibility of, again, some winter weather heading our way. The track, the amount at this point in time is still, again, way too early to be told on a few things. We can narrow it down a little bit for right now, but we'll be giving you a better idea as to what you may be seeing coming up here in the near future. We'll take a look at the forecast, as many models as we can, to give you an idea as to what we're going to be seeing, radar and satellite pictures. We'll also take a look at travel conditions, which right now, as of again, about Tuesday evening at 8.09, according to the clock bar up there in above my head, things are not doing, again, too bad for the time being. But as we go further into Wednesday, if you got any travel plans out there, again, something to keep an eye on for right now, and we'll keep an eye on what's happening out there for you on News Channel 3. Of course, Jim Jaggers will have more tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, and Todd Demers will have a whole bunch more coming up tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Welcome to everybody who's checking in again for tonight. We are live from House Onik. If you would like to, and if you have any weather going on, well, whatever weather you've got, again, just drop it into the comments section. We'll try to read off as many as we possibly can to give an idea as to what's happening. We're monitoring things here, again, keeping an eye on what's happening in and around the Mid-South area, and we'll keep you updated as much as we can on that. Getting started again right now on the National Watches and Warnings area from the National Weather Service. Uh, here in the Mid-South area, we're just not seeing too much yet, but those purple counties shaded in there for the Mid-South that is a winter weather advisory. That means, again, some form of winter weather is going to be possible in a particular area. It does not mean blizzard situation. It does not mean all-out catastrophe or anything of that nature. It just means, again, the possibility of some type of winter weather. It's kind of a coverall type advisory uh, that you might have heard of before. Again, we'll talk more about the locations of what we're going to be seeing coming up here in just a little bit. Currently on radar, there's little, if anything, really to be had at this point in time. There might be, again, several you know areas of a little bit of moisture pockets several thousand feet up, but uh, ramping up the sensitivity, looking at the lower levels of the atmosphere here, uh, we're just not seeing too much of anything at this point in time that shows uh, anything developing or moving our direction. So for tonight, I think everything is going to be relatively uh, cool and calm for right now. It's going to be tomorrow where things start to kind of go downhill, but we'll explain more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Again, so far it's quiet in the Mid-South area. Now again, whether or not it stays that way, that's going to be the main change as to whether or not we see anything coming on through here. So we'll try to time that portion of it out for you. Give me one second here while I get another map loaded up that I forgot to do. And we'll switch over to that in just a second. Okay, here we go. Taking a look at regional radar around the Mid-South. Uh, this courtesy of Penn State Meteorology. A uh, great website to go to is their eWall system. has a ton of information on it. Uh, if you'd like more information about any of these websites, email me and I'll let you know. Forgot to mention, again, forecast information scrolling by right here in the red bar. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, just take a look around. And again, we'll have more forecasts for you coming up here uh, throughout the area around News Channel 3 at 10 uh, with Jim Jaggers. Right now, there's not a lot going on. We do have, again, a little bit of activity down in the southeastern corner of Arkansas. It doesn't look like much, but signs of things to come as we get into around tomorrow morning. 
uh, was, is where we're going to be expecting a lot of things to really start across much of the Mid-South area. Now, what are we talking about for right now? Well, again, so far the main concern is going to be, again, light wintry precipitation. Uh, the hazardous weather outlook from the National Weather Service showing more snow potential north of us and more of a wintry mix along and south of Interstate 40. And again, that's going to be the main thing that we're going to be seeing for the time being. We're just not looking at huge amounts of snowfall out there. We'll take a look at what we may be seeing coming up here again in just a little bit. But much of what we're looking at for right now is going to be that variation between the two of those things uh, for the time being at this point. Now, again, moisture is kind of limited so far. We're not seeing a lot of that out there on the satellite picture. So it looks, again, fairly quiet back to around portions of Arkansas. Uh, that you can see in the center part of your screen right there. And most of what we're looking at with all that heavy white cloud cover out there from the Gulf of Mexico, that's mainly moisture going that direction, heading back over toward uh, the Appalachians, New England, and that area. That's where we're seeing most of that moisture for right now. So we've kind of got a bit of a break with that drier air right there in the center part of your screen. Now, National Weather Service, again, has issued... Uh, a winter weather advisory in effect for all of these counties that you're looking at, including uh, the Memphis metro area and Shelby County. This is in effect from tomorrow morning until about noon on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, this again is issued to show where we may see a variety of different types of winter weather, and that's what we may be looking at again for right now. What we're seeing at this point in time is the possibility of some snow in these blue shaded counties, including the metro, maybe some frozen precipitation like fr uh, sleet pellets and or freezing precipitation like freezing rain. It's going to be that meshed together, those different types of bands out there where you have a very close area of snow in one location, sleet on the other, and freezing rain in a mixture somewhere in the middle. Yes, winter weather can be, and often is, that finicky. There's not really much you can do about it except just kind of ride it out at this point in time. So uh, this is going to be something to keep an eye on for right now. Katie Casey, how many inches in Senatobia? Uh, we'll take a look at that coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, Jennifer Lesh, with enough coffee, I think we can pretty much survive anything, but thank you very much for that one. Uh, welcome to everybody checking in right now. Lisa Davis in Dyersburg, cold and windy, 30 degrees. Steve Christian, welcome from Robinsonville, just picking up a few of these from around the Mid-South. And Grady Bennett, uh, 32 in Berkeley, getting prepared for the weather. Very good idea. Thank you very much for that and everyone else checking in for right now. Now, what we're looking at here again is a winter weather advisory. And that includes for, again, all of the counties of the Mid-South. Dyersburg down to Oxford, Jackson, Tennessee to Forest City, and of course the Shelby County area included in that as well. Zooming out a little farther and going back to the north, up around St. Louis, those darker blue shaded counties that you're looking at is a winter storm watch. That is a little bit above the winter weather advisory that we have in effect for the Mid-South. So what we're looking at is the, right now, the heaviest possibility of anything involving snow up to into and around, say, southeast Missouri, western Kentucky, southwest Indiana, southern Illinois, and from roughly St. Louis all the way down to the Missouri-Arkansas state line. That's going to be, for right now, where we may see the heaviest snowfall and again, of course, possibly what we may be looking for in maybe some heavier amounts of sleet and or freezing rain. In the Mid-South area, it doesn't really look like we're going to be picking up as much as they are back to the north. But once again, remember, we're still at least about 24 hours away from what may be coming our direction. So this forecast and these advisories that you see over here may change as we get into the course of the next 12 hours or so. So that's why it is critically important to make certain that you pay attention as to what's going on uh, into and around the area. Michael Wilson, welcome from Chicago. Uh, glad to hear, and a Memphis native. Thank you very much. Yeah, I heard some winter weather uh, sneaking around up that direction, but probably going to be pretty, uh, maybe a little thicker up there, up around the uh, Lake Michigan area. So hope everybody stays safe up there. Thanks for checking in. Scott Jarvis, 34. Feels like 27 in Banner, Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you very much uh, for checking in from there and everybody else checking in across 
much of the rest of the Mid-South. All right, taking a look at some of the computer models, this one dealing again with the possibility of snowfall. This is going to get a little finicky here moving these things around, but I'm going to try to zoom in as much as I possibly can on this. Uh, going into Wednesday morning, as we hit about 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, to about noon. That's where we start to see in those little gray shaded areas right there south of Little Rock and around Memphis. That's where we start to see some snowfall accumulating. Again, doesn't look like much, like less than a tenth of an inch, less than a quarter of an inch. But as we go through about uh, close to 6 p.m. tomorrow, we start to see that potential of snowfall in West Tennessee, much of northern Mississippi, and eastern Arkansas. Then we go a little farther forward. Again, let's go into around, say, midnight on Thursday morning. And things kind of start to split here a little bit. And this is where it gets uh, kind of interesting at this point to see how this all pans out. Notice that bright band right there from roughly Little Rock Forest City back to around the Arkansas state line. And then east of Memphis, we've got, again, another bright band of heavier snowfall right over the Tennessee River Valley. Now, again, that's where the heaviest snowfall is considered, uh, maybe about anything between one to three inches or so. Now, that's the North American model. You see the NAM up there. That's, again, one computer model's opinion as to what's going on. So what we're looking for for right now is some snowfall out there. Again, the light gray shaded colors around Memphis, East Arkansas, West Tennessee, North Mississippi, half an inch to a quarter of an inch for the most part, but in localized areas scattered around there, there could be the possibility of heavier snowfall mixed in with all that. And again, that's just one computer model's opinion on that. Now we're going to go to another model on the same place at WXCharch.com. Uh, .eu. This is from the uh, European Forecast Model Center. And going a little bit farther on that, uh, again, seeing the snowfall developing and also into and around about 6 o'clock in the morning. Let's see, where do we go here? 6, uh, let's see, there's 9 o'clock in the morning. And this is where we start to see, this is the different types of precipitation. So white is the possibility of snowfall coming down actively at about 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Green is, again, a little bit of rainfall mixed in with there, and that orange-shaded color from the Tennessee River back down to around Jackson, close to around east-central Mississippi. That could be, again, sleet and or some freezing rain potential out there. Uh, the purple on the screen indicates, again, where the stuff has already fallen or where it is, is starting to accumulate. So you'll see that color stay pretty much the same, again, right there, and the white color is moving against that background back up to the north and to the east of that. So this is about for roughly 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to take that forward a little bit more to about lunchtime, and then by that point in time, it's kind of interesting that everything kind of really seems to break up by just a little bit. Uh, and then by the time we get into around, uh, let's say, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, that's ignore the crackling sound. That's one of my dogs chewing on a sock with a water bottle in it. It's her favorite thing. So excuse me for just one second, too. I've been doing a lot of talking today, <clears throat> so we've got to wet the whistle a little bit. We see, again, the potential. No, that's not root beer. That's just plain water right there. We see that snowfall sticking around into about 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Again, the purple-shaded colors is where the snow has already come down. At about 6 o'clock tomorrow night, we can see some more of that snow taking place. But between Memphis and Nashville, where you see the orange shaded in with the blue and the green, there is that possibility that we could get some heavier amounts of frozen and or freezing precipitation like sleet or freezing rain back toward the Tennessee River Valley. That could shift either direction right now, and that's what we're going to... Can you crinkle somewhere else for a little bit, please? I'm live here. Don't look at me that way. I gave you that sock. Kids these days, it's incredible. Sorry about that. You just ignore the noise down on the floor for right now. Again, that's what we're going to be looking for for about 6 p.m. for tomorrow evening. And then we could see some of this linger again into around very early on Thursday morning, say about going up to about 6 o'clock in the morning, somewhere in there. And we could see again more of that potential gone back to the north of us and could even see some of that circle back around as an area of low pressure begins. Seriously? 
excuse me a second. See her favorite thing right here. Okay, there you go. Thank you. <sighs> Teamwork, sorry about that. Anyway, that's what happens when you have a shorty in the house and wants to have all the attention. Anyway, this, where was I? Right, uh, forecast for right now. Okay, so for right now, again, we may be seeing some of this start up again early tomorrow morning and moving its way out of the picture by the time we get into around very early Thursday morning. This computer model is showing, again, the possibility of everything just making its way through, but there could be some lingering snowfall out there that I'm thinking uh, for the possibility for around Thursday morning somewhere on here for the time being. So this is, again, just a one model's estimate as to what's going on. Now, how much are we looking for? This is going to look a little confusing right here, but this is what is called a meteogram. These things show you on the left-hand side of the screen right over here, the amount going upwards and the time frame right on this column going all the way over to the right. So into the next about roughly 24 hours, that red line and the green line showing again the possibility of some sleet, but only about one one hundredth of an inch. So this does not look to be a big sleet producer out there, so good news on that. Now, for snowfall purposes, again, this is where we may run into some problems because we may be looking uh, at the potential of some more snowfall out across the Mid-South. And what we're looking at here, again, on this column right around here, going upwards to about two inches at the top bar, some of the computer models are showing about maybe two inches total, and a lot of them a little bit less than that, roughly about an inch or less. Main conventional wisdom for right now is showing roughly about an inch plus for Shelby County, at least where these computer models are concerned. So again, it doesn't look like a blizzard situation. And again, with the temperatures of the roadways being decently warm, hopefully sticking to the grassy areas, but that's something again that we're gonna have to kind of monitor and see what happens. We'll take a look at the roadway conditions out there coming up uh, in just a little bit. So this is what we're looking for, more snow, than sleet and or freezing rain in Memphis. Again, that could kind of wobble back and forth as this goes on through. All right, let's time this out by just a little bit. You're looking at the Weather Prediction Center's chart to give you an idea as to what's going on. So we'll start this at midnight tonight. And again, looking down toward the area into and around the Gulf of Mexico, you see again more rainfall developing. And again, the blue right there showing the possibility of some snowfall coming up this way. By the time we hit tomorrow, this is where we get to about 6 o'clock in the morning, and that's where we see again that orange color in the Mid-South, looking again at the possibility of a mixture of some type of precipitation. It's going to be light, but that moisture is going to come up from the Gulf of Mexico and unfortunately ride right over the top of that colder air. So right now it looks like some sort of mixture of frozen precipitation, rain, snow, maybe some sleet in that orange area. Best possibility of anything involving anything in the way of sleet potential in the dark purple. So Northeast Mississippi should be looking for some more potential of that right there. Lunchtime, again, on Wednesday, that's where we start to see, again, the potential for, again, more areas of frozen precipitation showing up uh, instead of just plain rain or snowfall. It depends on how warm it gets tomorrow, but the warmer it gets, especially if we could just go right above freezing, that's going to be a bit of a problem because that moisture could come down in just about any shape or form at that point in time. It looks like there could be some sleet, could be some freezing rain, could be some snow out there. Fortunately, it looks like it's going to be relatively light. Again, after all this is said and done, maybe about an inch to two inches, at least that's what the models are telling us for right now. Going forward to 6 p.m. on Wednesday, we continue to see that potential as that storm system that low develops and moves up this way, moving some more moisture around and hitting our particular area with some rain, sleet, and snowfall. And then on Thursday, whatever's left over the snow by about 6 o'clock in the morning, that starts to leave the area heading away from us and heading on up uh, through the area around the Tennessee River Valley back towards St. Louis, south of Chicago. Uh, so we should be seeing the potential of the heaviest stuff moving away from us by the time we hit midnight to 6 a.m. on Thursday. Steve Foster is icing on trees and power lines possible. It doesn't look like if there is enough of it to cause a problem, uh, there is going to be the potential of about maybe a hundredth of an inch, give or take, something like that on there. So that is a potential, 
but it doesn't look like a huge one, at least, again, right now. And yes, that is a conditional phrase, but unfortunately, that's the way these things pan out. If you take a look at the way, I'm going to put this on a loop for a second just so you can watch uh, this particular thing developing, heading up from the Gulf of Mexico. All it's going to take is just for this storm system that you see lifting its way up off the Gulf, dropping that moisture from the Gulf over the cold air, all it's going to take is for that system to move a couple hundred miles to the east, and we will not see hardly anything out of this. We'll see maybe a snowflake or two, some rainfall, and that's going to be really about all that we wind up with, and there's not going to be too much of anything else beyond that for this point in time. Now, if we get into and around the area of the storm system moving its way back toward the west a little bit, then we could get hit even harder with plenty of precipitation, way beyond two inches, maybe like three to four inches. Right now, the computer models are saying this is going to be skirting its way back up through around, say, Knoxville, into and around the Ohio Valley, uh, into the Appalachians. If it continues to walk that narrow line right there, then we should see again kind of a dusting to about a couple of inches of snowfall. But these things also have a habit of kind of wobbling at the last minute one direction or the other, and that can really change the forecast out there. So this is something we were going to be uh, watching for all this at this point. Lucy Van Pelt, stay tuned. I'll take a, one more look at the time frame for this coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Thanks to everybody for uh, tuning in for this this evening. Jennifer Lesh, actually, I've got some tea on the stove. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but brewed it a little while ago. So we could be seeing, again, the possibility of uh, more tea in my future. That could help out by just a little bit. All right, now, once again, I'm taking a look at kind of the setup for everything. Here's the time frame for everything that we're looking at. For tonight, from the National Weather Service, uh, showing temperatures for lows tonight going back into about the mid to upper 20s. So we're going to drop a few more degrees tonight to below freezing. Not exactly great news as we go into tomorrow. Now again, through about uh, midnight tonight, that pink strip you see going from Clarksdale up to about Tupelo, that's where we could see, again, the potential of some developing light snow mixed in with freezing or frozen sleep pellets. That'll be tonight, late, northern Mississippi and the Tennessee River Valley up around Tennessee. And that'll be through about 3 o'clock in the morning overnight tonight, starting tonight and going into tomorrow. Now, for Wednesday, high temperatures are barely going to be above freezing, and that potential right there that you're looking at is going to determine what we get and where. If it goes way above freezing, say about the 40s, we could all be looking at rainfall. If it stays right in this particular area, that's a good location for getting just about anything else out of that. Numerous types of precipitation right there. For 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, the pink line, again, snow mixed with ice pellets. North of that, the purple indicates, again, around Jonesboro through about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning through just north of Dyersburg. That's where we're seeing, again, whoops, hang on a second, there we go. That indicates the possibility more of snow in that area than anything else. South of that, the blue line... Clarksdale, Oxford, back up to around Ripley, Mississippi, south of Bolivar. That's where we see that RS. That's a rain-snow mixture. Again, that depends on where that temperature line starts to wind up at, and that is about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Going forward through about lunchtime, temperatures warm up enough. See the temperatures right there again, right in the mid-30s or so. Temperatures warm up enough to where we see green rainfall, over, well not green rainfall, but green indicating rainfall. Don't want you to think this is like Dr. Seuss's Ooblack or something. Rain from Jackson down to Tupelo. Rain mixed with snow back toward the metro area around noon tomorrow. And then snow and maybe a decent, maybe heavy band in the blue color from Shelby County down through about Lee and Phillips County in Arkansas. That's noon tomorrow where we could see that changeover between different uh, potential of different types of snowfall out there. Now, going into Wednesday night, once again, we're back. Well, let's see. That's not right. That's There we go. Once again, we go back to that fractured pattern depending on what the temperature is. And by 9 o'clock tomorrow evening, temperatures will be at to just below freezing at the surface, which means everything by that point in time coming down should be changing over to snowfall, or at least rain and snow 
making the transition over. That's about 9 o'clock tomorrow night with Memphis right in the center right there. And again, by midnight and through about 3 o'clock on Thursday morning, most of everything should be kind of winding down by just a little bit because the temperatures, again, way below freezing in the mid to upper 20s. And then we go forward to Thursday morning. Uh, some light snow showers still possible, lingering across the area. And then we should be, again, getting rid of most of that, if not all of it, by noon on Thursday. So what are we talking about for precipitation purposes for ice at this time? Again, it looks like about 1 100th of an inch of possible sleet. It uh, doesn't look like much right there, but actually that entire map is pretty much covered over by the potential, that pink color, of maybe some light sleet into and around the area. So that's the main thing we're looking at for right now. Uh, Dan Draper, potential of maybe one to approximately two inches at the maximum for Fraser and northern Shelby County. Again, that is the forecast for right now. Tomorrow it could be a lot less. It could also be a lot more. These things will fluctuate as we go throughout uh, about the next 24 hours or so. So again, please keep that in mind as we take a look around the area. Okay, snowfall amounts. Looking again at the time we hit noon tomorrow, not that much, maybe about a tenth of an inch. Going through about 6 p.m. tomorrow, another two-tenths of an inch in the heaviest blue-shaded category colors that we have there. Wednesday night, that's where it starts to get heavier, but that looks like, so far, when everything's going to be back out of the picture. So about 0 0.1, 0 0.2, now 0.3. Memphis is up to about, at this point, by about midnight Thursday, about a half an inch to an inch or so. North of us, into and around, let me see if I can get here without my cursor going nuts, right up into around northern parts of the viewing area, I-40 northward, that's where we see, again, the potential for some areas picking up the heaviest amount of precipitation. Union City, Dyersburg, the Boot Hill, Jonesboro, uh, back around Real Foot Lake, anything into southeast Missouri. You're going to be picking up the worst of the worst on that one as we get into and around that time frame. That's going to be, again, about midnight on Thursday. Going forward a little bit farther, 6 o'clock in the morning, the totals again showing the heaviest amount of precipitation around that same area. So it looks like Jonesboro, by the time we get into around Thursday at midnight, finishing things up Thursday morning through about Union City around Dyersburg, looks like we're going to be seeing uh, the worst of the worst precipitation in that area. The heaviest stuff north of I-40, northwest Tennessee, northeast Arkansas. And again, that's the way it looks right now. Could be, again, the possibility of new stuff out there. So again, on top of that, as it leaves, maybe another dusting or so, but that's going to be, again, about it. Larry Thomas, stay tuned. We'll take a look at the road conditions coming up here uh, in just a little bit. Much of what we're looking at right now, again, so far it is favoring snow over sleet. Hoping it stays that way, but again, with the temperatures very close to freezing, either way, this could go one of a couple different directions. Again, if you've never tried winter weather forecasting, I urge you to give it a shot and post what you think you're going to get in your location in public, and we'll see how yours turn out, uh, again, to go with what goes on there. So again, starting overnight tonight, uh, let me run this back here real quick so we can take a look. Again, by Wednesday tonight, 3 o'clock in the morning, Light snow, maybe some freezing rain, sleet pellets in that purple shaded area down to around portions of northern Mississippi. That's tonight, starting off again in the next few hours. By the time we hit Wednesday morning, could be some snow mixed with ice pellets out there. And then snow mixed with rain, depending on the temperatures, as we get into around Wednesday at noon. Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock, dinner time, still some snow, possibly mixed with some sleet pellets out there. Could be, again, some heavier snow band in the colored, the blue-colored area. And then again, excuse me, seeing a mixture in and around the Mid-South area as it starts to wrap up. And as we go to around Thursday morning at 6 o'clock, most of everything should be gone, done, and over with and heading out of the picture at this point in time. So that, again, is going to be the main thing we're looking at. Uh, Amy Autry, the next uh, computer model run will be coming up here in about... 
give or take four hours or so. So we'll be looking again for that particular area for computer information. Uh, the next update from the National Weather Service in Memphis, uh, that usually comes out at about 3.30 tomorrow morning, usually very early in the morning for pilots and meteorologists wanting to look at that type of stuff, so you will probably see that there. Rob Smith, again, accumulation, uh, ice accumulation at this time, Wednesday. By Wednesday night, it doesn't look like much, like maybe a fraction of an inch, like one, two, three hundredths of an inch, so we're just not looking at a lot there, but it doesn't take much to cause problems. Snow, on the other hand, again, could be stacking up in the areas north of I-40 and the Memphis metro area. It looks like parts of northeast Arkansas and northwest Tennessee will be winding up with the worst of the worst. Uh, the heaviest amount of precipitation as in about one to two inches possible into and around that particular area. So again, that's going to be the main thing to take a look at there. Uh, nice reminder from the National Weather Service in Memphis again, making certain your pets are taken care of. If they are outdoor pets, they need to have adequate shelter. If they don't have that, animal neglect is a misdemeanor crime in all 50 states. So again, please make certain that you have all of that taken care of before you go on out. And again, making certain everybody's taken care of on that. So here's what it looks like again from the National Weather Service in Memphis. The current accumulation totals, expectations, you can kind of draw a line right along I-40. Lightest amounts of snowfall, zero to around one inch in and around that area just south of there. Parts of northwestern Shelby County could wind up with about maybe one to two inches, something like that. Uh, again, this map is going to fluctuate back and forth over the next about 24 hours, so this is just uh, the estimate for right now. Heaviest activity, two to three inches, possibly higher, from Jonesboro, portions of Poinsett County, all the way up to around Dyersburg. And then if you notice, uh, very interesting, right at the top of your screen right there, uh, the darkest shaded blue in northern Dunklin, Pemiscot counties in the Boot Heel, and back up around around Obion and Lake counties in Tennessee, that could be about maybe three to four inches if everything holds for right now. Again, the worst of the worst is going to be up that direction. Uh, for the rest of the mid south, we're going to get something. It looks like a dusting, if anything else, at this point in time. But the heavy, <clears throat> excuse me, the heaviest activity does look like we are going to be seeing again back to the north of I-40. I urge you to stay on top of this. Again, this is not exactly life-threatening weather when it comes to severe weather, but again, for travel purposes, this is something you're going to want to pay attention to on here. And again, for traveler's sake, I would make sure that you are paying very close attention to that. Uh, Terry Bradbury, again, Fraser at this point in time, looking at the maps, that's what we're taking a look at for northwestern Shelby County. Could get about one to two inches depending on location. Again, this is not going to say at this point in time that you will wind up with half an inch in your backyard and your neighbor down the street could pick up three inches. That's what happens with these things. It's not a whole blanket carpet bombing type total. It doesn't work that way. So the best average inf information that we have, the average forecast depth for the possibility of snow, yes, that's what we could be seeing into and around that area for the time being for uh, the time being at this point. So again, this is what we're going to be seeing for the time at this point. And again, that's going to be the heaviest of the heavy for right now. All right, quick check of driving conditions for the time being from idrivearkansas.com. Uh, this is from Arkansas Highway and Transportation Department. Uh, the county is shaded in green, or the roads shaded in green at this time are showing no problems at all. Uh, with any of the roadways out in and around portions of eastern Arkansas. We don't have any reports coming in from uh, southeast Arkansas for some reason, but everything in northeast Arkansas uh, looks pretty good. Mississippi, uh, in and around that particular area, let me get rid of the cameras and the weather sensors and the signs and a few other things, and you can see that at this time, again, green roadways out there. We're not seeing anything in the way of problems, and this is from m.traffic. Dot com. This is for Mississippi, very good place to go to for the uh, Mississippi Department of Transportation. And it's going to be down to our south that we see the potential of this stuff moving up our direction. But so far, all major roadways 
are in good shape in Mississippi. For Tennessee, again for I-155 around Dyersburg and everything around the metro area and also into and around West Tennessee, that green line indicates that everything is doing okay for right now. Roads are passable. Uh, understand from the mayor of Memphis that, again, we're going to be getting the treated roadways going on here tonight into tomorrow. So again, good news on that for the time being. So it looks like everything is well ahead of schedule for getting the roadways prepped. One little bit of advice from being a uh, native Kansan, want to make certain that again, if and when things start getting a little dicey out there, give yourself, and this is going to sound really weird, but it works and it's a good idea to get yourself out of a lot of long, boring conversations with your insurance agent. If your normal commute takes, say, 15 minutes on a good day with dry roads and no problems at all with the weather, if you get slick roadways or anything even approaching slick roadways, multiply your driving time by at least three. So if it takes you 15 minutes to get into work, take 45. Plan for 45. You're thinking, oh, that doesn't make any sense. I can just go ahead and drive like I want to. No, not on roadways that are slick like this. That's a very, 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 very bad idea, okay? Rushing around just means you're going to get into an accident that much quicker, especially if you don't slow down, keep an eye on everything else going around you as a driver, and making certain that you have, again, enough time to get to where you're going. Rushing in winter weather is a pretty much surefire ticket to having a large insurance bill and a lot of paperwork to take care of. So giving yourself enough time to get there would be one of the best things that you can possibly do. So again, please use the information on there that we have to keep track of what's going on there at this point in time. Uh, truck driver James Freno, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, what do you recommend that I use to track this? We use uh, the current uh, software that we use is a, an app called Radar Scope. You're looking at it right now. Uh, it's very handy. It gets information direct from the National Weather Service. You can even switch over to the terminal radars for airports, uh, marine radars, depending on location, stuff like that. So radar scope, we use that at News Channel 3. Otherwise, the main thing that I would recommend is keeping track of these websites. Again, from TDOT, their Smartway system, a great place to go to. Again, for more information on that would be smartway.tn. Dot gov. That's again the one you're looking at there for Arkansas. For Mississippi, it's at the top of the screen up there, m.traffic.com. A uh, good place to keep an eye on what's going on in portions of northern areas of Mississippi. And if my tabs hadn't disappeared, I can show you this one. Uh, idrivearkansas.com. This one again is uh, updated at least, I believe, every 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And if there's anything special, they'll re-update it for like uh, large shutdowns of the interstate, major accidents, things like that. So this would be a couple of great websites to keep around. And of course, keep attuned to News Channel 3 for more. I'll have even more coming up on the forecast as much as I can on my Facebook page. So definitely want to stay tuned for a lot more on that. National Weather Service in Memphis, their Twitter page will have a ton of weather information as well. All of us at News Channel 3 Todd, Tim, and Jim combined, and myself will be keeping you updated on what's going on out there. And, of course, you can check out my Twitter feed, again, for more information about what may be coming uh, our direction this time. Amy Autry, yes, uh, brakes, slamming the brakes on on ice. Hopefully your uh, anti-lock brakes should handle that for you, so you just press down gently on the brake pad, and the brakes will so sort of shutter, shutter stop you to a stop. It's better than pumping it all the time because then at least you'll let the brake system do exactly what it was programmed to do to help stop things. But a short, sharp stop on slick roadways does a very good job of just careening you in motion. Inertia is a very big thing at this point in time. Shelly Essery, Theo, Mississippi. Uh, again, not entirely sure about that particular location, but once again, the heaviest amount of precipitation, the map that you're looking at here doesn't, whoops, hang on a second, uh, okay, stop doing that, there we go, uh, back into northern Mississippi, we're going to be looking at maybe a couple of fractions of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch, uh, higher as you go upwards of I-40, 
and the worst of which is going to be again across northeast Arkansas and northwest Tennessee. So that's going to be the main thing uh, that we take a look at there. So much of Mississippi should be getting less north of I-40. We'll be getting much more of it. And once again, I reiterate, a lot of what you're looking at, this data will more than likely change as we go into, again, tomorrow morning. So again, this is where we're going to be seeing that potential for uh, more problems out there into uh, early on Thursday morning, getting the kids to school. That's where we're going to be seeing the main problem out there and could be, again, some slick conditions out there. If anything turns up in the way of school closings, we'll have that for you coming up on News Channel 3 as we go throughout the course of the rest of tonight. And tune in for News Channel 3's Todd Demers. He'll have a lot more coming up tomorrow morning. Again, that'll be starting at 4.30 on News Channel 3 Daybreak. You can also get my forecast again with Bob and Josh. That'll be on AM 7.30, Yahoo Sports Radio. That'll be from 8 to 10 a.m. tomorrow morning, so tune in for that. And, of course, you can get more on our forecast and all the forecast details, not just what's scrolling by here. Go to this website address, wreg.com slash weather again for more information about what's going on there that'll wrap it up for this edition of news channel 3's exclusive video weather blog weather overtime for again uh, tuesday evening usually used to doing this on saturdays or sunday uh, again thank you very much ashley dawn ripple yeah i thought i'd get uh, you know all gussied up geek patrol and uh, show off for a little bit here so you know we're casual here tonight so might as well just kind of take it easy uh, by just a little bit instead of having to wear the suit and tie all the time. But thank you very much. Glad you like the apparel for tonight on here. I'll have more coming up again on social media. Todd Demers will have more starting at 4.30. And, of course, tonight uh, in just about one hour and 12 minutes, Jim Jaggers has more on your forecast on News Channel 3 at 10. A lot of forecast changes coming up. Keep up to date with all of them with News Channel 3. Stick around for a lot more throughout the rest of the evening on air and online. And, of course, tomorrow morning starting at 4.30, Todd Demers will have more on that. Live and direct from House Onyx, nice and casual for tonight. I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx, so stay tuned for much more with News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised of the approaching winter weather. Thanks for joining us tonight.